Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Dani and today it's time for the largest book haul that I've ever done on this channel. I'm pretty sure. I'm not even sure that I have all of the books here. But, well, you can see all of them because I hid a second pile in the back. But, yeah, I'm not even sure if they're all here. So I'm gonna check. But it's already enough, maybe? Actually, there's another one on the floor. Oh my god. This is... I'm going to give a very brief description for all of them, otherwise we're going to be here forever. I think we're still missing six books from here. This is crazy. Okay, I think this is it. I put the other six that I found. There were still six here on the back. And we're going to go through them in some order. So all of these are books that I got in December and January. Most in December and like six from January. Seven. Jesus. Okay, let's start with the ones from the beginning of December. So first we have Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Skyward series. It's going to be four books. And I already read it. I don't know if I gave a review for it. I didn't love it too much. My full review is on Goodreads if you're interested in checking it out. But yeah, it's it was bought, it was read. It's here. <laughs> Then I have two that I kind of already hauled on my birthday vlog. So this was a gift from Kelsey, from the channel Reading with Kelsey. And this was a gift from Sasha from The Wild Sasha. Thank you so much. This is The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson, a YA that the magic system involves drawing with chalk. And this is Ever Heard of Doorway by Shannon McGuire, the first in the series of The Wayward Children. And I'm really excited to read the rest of the series now. It's a series of novellas and it's really good. It's about kids that go into other worlds and come back to our world and that they don't fit in. Then we have Fumetal Alchemist Volume 15. I'm buying them in these editions as they are released. And this one was released in December. It's a manga series about two brothers who do, who do alchemy. Another one that is already on my TBR for January is Exile, the second book in the Keeper of the Lost Cities series by Shannon, Shannon Messenger. This is a middle grade fantasy series about a girl who finds out she's an elf and she goes to a magic school in other worlds as well. <laughs> then we have Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. This was the buddy read for January in the Discord. If you're not on Discord, the link is in the description. And we are reading this one together this month in January. I already read it. My thoughts are all there. So if you read it, if you're interested in reading it as well, you can still join us on this discussion. Let me bring some to the front. So most of the books here were gifts from my dad. I have a few others that I bought myself. And I have two more that were gifts from a co-worker, from a Secret Santa that I did. So let's do those two first from the Secret Santa. So she gifted me Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is the first in a very, very long series by this author that I haven't read any yet. And I don't have any excuse not to start a series anymore. I'm really excited to get to it. And she also gifted me The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. If you know, I'm trying to read all of Agatha Christie's books in order. So I'm, it's going to take a little bit for me to get to this one. But it's already on the list and I've heard amazing things about this one. I have a really cool and unique book that I hold. I don't know if I should just put it in the middle of everything or leave it to the end. I'm going to leave it to the end. Hopefully a lot of people will watch the whole thing or just scroll to the end, whatever we prefer. But it's really cool and I want to give it space to show it properly. But let's go through some more. Okay, we have The Lost Ones by Shana Kamal. This is another thriller. This is going to be the year of the thrillers. Honestly, this is mostly thrillers and I'm really excited for it. So this is The Lost Ones. This is also a series, I think, with a detective, probably. Usually thrillers are with a detective. And I really don't know what the story of this one is. And I don't mind. Let me see if there's like a quick blurb. She won't stop until the truth is found. A dark, compulsively readable psychological suspense debut, the first in a new series featuring Nara Watts. So that's probably the detective. We have He Started It by Samantha Downing. There's another Samantha Downing here somewhere, we'll get to it. Uh, this is another thriller. What is this about? I don't know. Okay, so I just read the tiny beginning of the synopsis here because I don't want to read everything, but apparently there are three sisters who haven't seen each other in a long time, but now they get together again because their grandfather died and left a cryptic message. And that's, that's all I want to know. I don't want to read any more than this. 
Bunny by Mon Amour. I've heard so many things about this book. Not all good, but a lot of things. And this is a dark academia, I think, about girls who are friends, but like, are they really friends? It's like a dangerous friendship. And it sounds like this book is completely weird and you don't really know what you're reading as you're reading it. And I'm really curious to know how I'm gonna feel about it. Okay, I don't have space to move anymore. Should I move this back? Okay, let's do that. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I've been dying to read this book since it was first released. And the final one in the trilogy is being released this year. And now I, like, I have to start it. This is a YA thriller, which I love so much. I've been reading a lot of YA thrillers and I've been falling in love with this specific category of thrillers. And I guess it's about an inheritance again and games. Should I read this? Like what he started it and like vlog it about inheritance books? You tell me. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is a very, very short book. I read a lot of Neil Gaiman, not a lot. I've read some Neil Gaiman in the past. And I've enjoyed everything that I've read by him, some more, some less. But I'm really intrigued about this one. I've started the audiobook one time, but I don't think the audiobook is the best way to go into this book because it's a little bit confusing and like you don't know exactly what's going on. So I feel like the physical book will be better for me. But yeah, this is about a man who goes back to his childhood home to attend a funeral and they're are weird things happening there with maybe magic, maybe paranormal stuff, maybe it's just in his mind. Who knows? The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Yes, I have not read this yet. And the reason why I bought this is because I want to read If We Were Villains by ML Real, but I want to read The Secret History first because everyone talks about them together and this came out first and I like to th read things in order. So I want to read The Secret History. This is a dark academia about a group of students and someone died or someone killed someone else, something like that. But I hope I can read it soon because then I can read If We Were Villains. I know not everyone loved both of the books, but still I'll see where I where I fall in that. Vengeful by V. Schwab. This is the second book in the, what's the name of the series? Villains? The first one is Vicious, then we have Vengeful, and we also have Extraordinary, which is a graphic novel that goes between the, the two books. And there's going to be a third book. Well, this is a sci-fi series about two friends who found out that if you have a near-death experience... Well, I don't know if they found out if it's established in the world. I read the first book and I don't remember that specific plot point. But if you have a near-death experience, you get superpowers. Not every time, but it happens. And they start doing experiments and they have superpowers themselves. And it continues the story. We'll see. Oh my god, there's still a lot to go through. When All the Girls Are Sleeping by Emily Arsenal. This is a YA thriller, again, uh, kind of like more of a horror side suspense, something in that area. It's in a boarding school for girls. Well, there's a, also a boy boarding school close to it. I'm listening to the audiobook of this one. So it's about this boarding school where there's a ghost that haunts it. And everyone kind of knows about this ghost and weird things are starting to happen again. And the girl committed suicide a year ago and now, again, weird things are happening. And we're figuring that out. You're starting to be able to see the cover of the next book. So I'm gonna leave this one here and I'm gonna go with the one on the back. So Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This is a classic about four girls, four sisters, who I said in my TBR, because this is my January TBR, I said it, that was three sisters and a friend, it's four sisters. And I haven't started it yet, but they are telling their story during the Civil War, I think, or right after or right before. It's related to the Civil War and everyone loves this book so much. And I wanna see what this is all about. This Violent Delights by Micah Nem Nemerver. Nem Micah Nemerver, I hope I'm saying that right. Again, another thriller, another Dark Academia book about boys in a university and again I think this is a, a little bit like Bunny in the sense that there's like a dangerous friendship going on. It says the secret history meets lie with me in this Hitchcockian tale of two college students both with troubled pasts whose escalating obsession with each other will radically alter the course of their lives. So maybe I should read the secret history before reading this one as well since it's being compared together. 
The Night Swim by Megan Golding. This is another thriller. True crime podcast host covering a controversial trial finds herself drawn deep into a small town's dark past and a brutal crime that took place there years before. Okay, cool. I didn't know what this was about, but it's about a podcast podcast host. If We Were Villains by Emma Rio, like I said, I want to read this one after reading The Secret History. Again, Dark Academia, group of students, someone died, someone killed another person. I don't know, there's a lot of Shakespeare in here as well. I think it's a group of students who study Shakespeare. I might be wrong. Anxious People by Frederick Bachmann. This is very different from everything else that's going on here. This is a contemporary, I think it's like a bank robbery that goes wrong. It, yeah, it says it's a novel about a crime that never took place. A would-be bank robber who disappears into thin air and eight extremely anxious strangers who find that they have more in common than they, than they ever imagined. I'm very curious to read this. I've only read, what's the name, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman, and I really loved it. I have to be in a very specific mindset to read his books just because it's not what I typically read. And it's, like I said, it's more contemporary than fantasy or anything else. So I don't know, it's too close to real life. So I can't read it when I want just to escape, if that makes sense. And so there's two others and then I'll move the spy to the back. The Project by Courtney Summers. I've read Sadie by Courtney Summers and I really love that. This is a YA thriller about a girl whose sister is in a cult, maybe? She's in like part of a project thing that sounds a lot like a cult. And I don't know much more than that. Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. This is another thriller about, uh, about people who do experiments. I forgot. How far will you go to protect your family? Will you keep their secrets, ignore their lies? Uh, experimental chamber that may cure a range of conditions from infertility to autism. So it's a bit sciency as well, which I really like. So really excited for this one. Okay, let's move this. Okay. Oh my God, this is a lot of books. This can go here and this can stay in the back. Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Imide. I really hope I'm saying this right. Another YA thriller. This has been compared to Gossip Girl meets something, I forgot. But yeah, Private Academy, someone starts to send anonymous messages to reveal secrets about people. Sounds a lot like Gossip Girl and sounds like something that I would really enjoy. The Last House on Needless Street by Katriana Ward. I have no idea what the plot of this book is. I know it's told in three perspectives and one of them, like it, one is the perspective of a cat, one is the perspective of a young girl and another is an old man. I can't be wrong, but I don't know anything about the plot and People on booktube in general refuse to say anything else about this book because everything could be a spoiler and that makes me so intrigued and now I need to read this book. That's pretty much my reasoning. The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. I've read all of CJ Tudor's works in the past, uh, everything that was published since Burning Girls and I want to read this one. I don't know what it is about. Two teenage girls disappeared and now 30 years later they're going to do something and probably more people disappear. I don't want to know more about this. I don't like knowing a lot about thrillers before going in. Because a lot of the synopsis tell the main plot. Like, the synopsis for the last TJ Tudor that I read pretty much gave the review from halfway of the book. It was really sad. Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is another one that everyone says it's really weird and confusing and you don't really know what you're reading. And I want you to know how I feel about that. I think it's, again, Dark Academia secluded elite university following a dangerously curious rebellious undergraduate who uncovers a shocking secret about an exclusive circle of students. I don't want to know anything else. Where They Wait by Scott Carson. This was a nominee for the Horror Award on Goodreads last year. And this is about a place, like a company that you can go... Oh, it's an app, sorry. It's about an app called Clarity that helps you with sleep? I don't want to know more than that, but I think it's kind of like that. It's a bit sciencey as well, and I'm guessing they are controlling something as you're sleeping. We'll see. In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. 
another thriller about what? Six friends, one college reunion, one's unsolved murder. I'm excited. That's it. Reunion, so something happened a long time ago. We're revisiting things. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. I haven't read any Alice Feeney before, but I've heard really good things about this one. This was released last year. It was... Maybe it was in the thriller category? Words for Goodreads? I don't know. I don't remember. But here it says, 10 years of marriage, 10 years of secrets, and an anniversary they will never forget. And one that I already mentioned before, Extraordinary by V. Schwab. This is the very tiny <laughs> graphic novel that tells a story about someone from the villains series, which I don't want to read. Trilogy. It's a trilogy, I guess. Okay, I have one, only one more normal book and then two really cool books. Ecstasia by Claire Legrand. This was sent to me by HarperCollins. It comes out in February, I think, at the end of February. Am I right? Yes, February 22nd. And this is about a kind of like a cult as well. It's a village, the quiet village of Haven, in which all the men start to die, I think. Oh, this is very shiny, sorry. <laughs> and these four girls, they're called saints. They are chosen to defeat the evil. I'm hoping this is more of a thriller and horror novel instead of a fantasy novel. That's the expectation that I'm going to read this book. Hopefully more horror than fantasy. Two really cool books that I know books to read, but I'm really excited about them and I hope you are as well. <laughs> And they really have you can't pick them up with one hand so let's move this here first we have the ultimate waldo's watcher collection this has seven is it seven yes seven where's waldo paperback books in here i don't know if you can see it well and i really love where's waldo i think it's such a fun thing to do and like just have it on a coffee table for Friends, when they come, they can just like try to find Waldo. I don't know. I I've grown up with this in Brazil, and well, not this collection. This was released uh, last year in September, I think. And I just I really wanted since the first time I saw it because it looks amazing. It's huge, and the spines of all the books together is so cute, and it's awesome. I'm so excited about this, and I don't have a place to put it. No, it's too big. Okay, it's just going to go here. I don't know when the camera stopped filming. Hopefully you saw everything about Where's Waldo, because that's important for me. And now, okay, this has got to go down because it's going to fall, but, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to hide Waldo from you, or I can do this. There we go, oh my God. This is awesome, don't fall, please. And now I have a really awesome book that, I don't know if, a lot of people heard about it. The way I heard about it was from my brother a long time ago. He mentioned it and we really wanted to try to find a way to buy it, but it was not available anywhere ever. You could only find it on eBay for really, really like a, such a ridiculous price because it's kind of like a work of art, really, not a book, but it is a book and it's awesome. It is the Codex Serafinianus by What's his name? Luigi Serafini. This is amazing. This is so cool. And it, oh my God, I can't wait for you to see it. If you haven't heard of this, basically this is an encyclopedia of a made up world with the whole explanation of like plants and animals and people and everything about how this world works, but it's written in a made up language. So you can't really read it. It's just amazing. I really love it. And they finally released another edition of it. It is, what's the anniversary something edition? I don't have the paper that says which anniversary it is anymore. I think it's 40th anniversary. God, the paper in this edition is stunning. It feels like fabric. It's amazing. So let me show you the first page of this book. Isn't it crazy? I don't know if you showed well in the camera. If you didn't, I'll film separately. But it's just amazing. Let me find like a place with drawings. There are a lot of things here that are 
kind of disturbing, <laughs> not gonna lie, but just in a really cool way. Maybe it's just me, but... So here, I'm guessing, it's explaining about the type of eggs that you can find in this world. It's amazing. It's... Like I said, it's more of a work of art than anything. This guy, the he's an Italian uh, artist who wrote the book and created this whole thing. And I don't know, they're, they're, he's just amazing. There's a decodex, because the book's called Codex, so there's a decodex in the end of this edition. So I don't know if it really explains how to read these things. I have to take a look at this closely, but I think it's mm, cooler, like it's more exciting if we just can't ever decipher it. But I feel like the cool thing is that you see patterns, you see like this is an actual language because it, there are things that repeat themselves. But I don't know if it really, if it really is or if it's completely all made up. It's just really awesome and I'm really happy with this gorgeous edition. And if you've heard of this book or if you just think that it looks really cool and you want this for yourself, I will say that this edition is amazing. It's so high quality, has a ribbon in it as well. And just the paper is really thick and amazing. And I love it. I got it with a really big discount because it's very, very expensive. So I would say wait until there's a sale or something. There was a sale for Boxing Day here for this book and I had another uh, discount to go on top of that. So it was basically half the price because it's very expensive. So I'm, I'm really happy about it. And this is the coolest book I own now together with the Way of Kings Lodger Brown edition, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> so we're gonna say goodbye with the two most exciting books that I showed you here on this book haul. Let me know if you've read any of the other books that I mentioned. If you've heard of this, let me know if you've heard of this before. Uh, look it up online to see more images of it. There's a lot of images that you can find online and it's, oh my god, it's really cool. Okay, so let me know if you've read any of the other books and which ones you think I'm going to like, which ones you want me to read and give you a review for them to see if you will enjoy as well. I'm really excited for all of these books, truly. My dad let me have a lot of fun at the bookstore and I've never gotten so many books at once. And it's just all of the books that I'm so, so excited to read. And I'm really excited about how much this is going to be the year of the thrillers for me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe and thank you so much for joining me.